Hello everyone, it's been quite a while since my last Diluc guide, in the time since then Sumeru and Dendro have come out causing a lot of new changes to occur to Diluc, like new reactions and new artifact sets he can use, also in this time I've learned of new useful things pertaining to Diluc, so to keep your Diluc up to date and as strong as possible I will explain and help you through all of these new things in regard to his usual melt and vaporize build, his monopyro build and lastly his burgeon build. I'll also be going over some common mistakes people make with Diluc. I'm sure many of you know many people say Diluc is weak and of those that say this a good amount of them make certain mistakes that really limit his damage. I myself used to think Diluc was weak as well when I initially got him but after learning of these mistakes and fixing them my Diluc became much stronger and is why I don't at all see him as weak. Anyways without further ado let's begin. Before we get into Diluc's kit and builds, I'm going to first talk about the common mistakes people make with Diluc that really hinder his damage. I feel it's important to have these things in mind to better understand how to build and play Diluc. These mistakes I've seen are made by beginners and even veterans. The first mistake is not building enough elemental mastery on Diluc. See, aside from crit, Diluc needs to have a good balance of attack and EM to deal high damage. Usually players will have a good attack on Diluc which solves one of Diluc's needs, yet they don't solve the other need of Diluc that being EM. Simply having too much attack will not cause your Diluc to deal high damage. To deal high numbers you want to reach a good balance of attack and EM, generally you want Diluc to have around 200 EM and 1800 attack. The balancing of these stats can be a headache so to make things simple, you pretty much always want to run Diluc with Bennett. Bennett will cause Diluc to have huge attack which will allow Diluc to meet and go beyond his attack requirement which is really good. Then with all this attack you can easily run an EM stance on Diluc to meet his EM guideline. All in all, Bennett solves a lot of Diluc's problems, allowing him to be much stronger, so I highly recommend that whenever you play Diluc, you should play him with Bennett. Alternatively, you can give Diluc an attack sense and use C6 Diana's EM bonus with her using the 4 piece instructor set for extra EM, but I recommend to just use Diluc and Bennett together because they deal more damage together and overall just feel better to play together. Now for the second mistake, this is not properly vaporizing or melting. See, when you trigger melt or vaporize, you want the enemy to first be affected by hydro or cryo before you hit them with pyro for a reaction. For example, with Xing Chou, I'll often see players simply attack as much as possible with Diluc's pyro attacks without properly applying hydro. Doing this will cause Diluc to not vaporize, rather Xing Chou will be. So when you play Diluc, you'll notice Diluc's damage is very low, but that's only because Xing Chou is actually vaporizing. To fix this, you want to properly time your pyro attacks. So once again with the example of Xing Chou, before you use any of Diluc's pyro attacks, you want to normal attack with Diluc to first apply Hydro to the enemy. You'll know an enemy is affected by Hydro when the Hydro symbol appears above or below the enemy's health bar. Once the enemy is affected, attack with pyro to vaporize and repeat this. This is the same case for Cryo, where you want to first have the enemy affected by Cryo. Once they are affected, attack with one of Diluc's pyro attacks. After this, normal attack with Diluc to wait for the enemy to be affected with cryo again. Once they are, then apply pyro again and repeat this. Now with that covered, I'm going to quickly go over his kit while still being detailed. Let's begin with his skill, which is his most important ability. Diluc's skill is a sequence of three pyro attacks. Keeping in mind the proper timing of melt and vapes, you don't want to use his skills right after another. Instead, you want to use his normal attacks in between his skill to time and perform your reactions properly. I recommend to only perform one normal attack in between each of his skills because it's a reliable and easy to perform technique. You could also perform two normal attacks and then a skill, but this will lead to a damage loss since you're not melting or vaporizing with Diluc as much, so it's best to only use two normal attacks if an enemy is affected by the wrong element and you're waiting for them to be affected by the right one. Next for Diluc's burst it is a bit of a complex subject. For one it is a really good burst, it deals high damage when used to vaporize or melt, moreover when used with his passive talent Blessing of Phoenix, Diluc will gain a 20% pyro damage bonus. But when cast the burst does have the caveat of causing Diluc's normal attacks to be infused with pyro. This pyro infusion can be a big hindrance since Diluc will be applying so much pyro to enemies that you'll be triggering reverse melt or reverse vape. This is when Diluc isn't performing these reactions, rather the cryo or hydro unit is. Given this, unless the team in which you're running Diluc in applies a lot of cryo or a lot of hydro to where Diluc's pyro application isn't too much, of which I'll mention in the team section, I recommend to only use Diluc's burst as the last hit of your rotation. So after you've used all of Diluc's skill, before you switch to another character and repeat the rotation, use Diluc's burst for one big final reaction hit. 
Finally, with Deluxe Normal Attacks, they're your normal Claymore attacks, so they're not special, but you will be using them often when timing your skills for Vaporizes and Melts, as mentioned earlier. With all this in mind, when you're leveling up Deluxe talents for Vape and Melt Deluxe, prioritize leveling up his skill and normal attacks since these will be the attacks Deluxe will use the most. You can then level up his burst. When leveling up Monopyro Deluxe talents, you'll want to prioritize all of his talents. This is because Deluxe will be using all of them, so all of them are important and can deal really good damage when leveled up. Finally, for Burgeon Deluxe, you don't actually have to level up any of his talents. Deluxe will be dealing damage through the Burgeon reaction, which does not scale on talent level, but instead Deluxe EM and character level. So if you're solely building Deluxe for Burgeon, I recommend to not invest your resources into Deluxe talents, but instead invest them into leveling Deluxe to level 90, since this will increase his Burgeon damage by a massive 34%. But if you still want to level his talents for some extra damage, level his skill, normal attacks, and then burst. Now let's move on to what weapons you should use on Deluke. Starting off with early game weapons, there are only two claymores suitable for Deluke. The first being the Blood Tainted Greatsword, which you should use for Melt, Vape, or Burgeon Deluke, and then the Debate Club, which can be used for Mono Pyro as well as Melt and Vape Deluke. In regard to light game weapons, there are many options, of which I'll rank based on each claymore strength. Starting off with Melt and Vape Deluke, the best 5 star claymores is the Wolf's Gravestone, the Unforged, and then the Red Horn Stone Thresher. These three are the best claymores for this build since they give either tons of attack or tons of crit damage which of course are very important. So I highly recommend to use these claimers if you have them but if you don't you can also use the Song of Broken Pines or the Skyward Pride. For 4 stars there are some really good options that can out damage the Skyward Pride, this being the Rain Slasher, the Serpent Spine, and then the Blacklist Slasher. The Rain Slasher is especially good because it gives a lot of EM, so when used to melt or vape this weapon deals a lot of damage. This claimer is also especially good when used for Vaporize because of its passive which increases damage when enemies are affected by Hydro. Additionally, regarding the Serpent Spine, at R5 it can actually deal more damage than the Wolf's Gravestone, making it Deluxe's best weapon. Moving on, after the Serpent Spine comes the Lithic Blade, followed by the Luxurious Sea Lord, and lastly the Prototype Archaic. For the Mono Pyro build, Deluxe's best options are the same as the Melt and Vape Claymores, excluding the EM ones since of course there'll be no reactions being performed. So aside from those ones, you can use any of the weapons I just mentioned. Regarding the weapons for the Burgeon build, the EM is very important, so you'll want to run an EM weapon on Deluke. So weapons like the Rain Slasher and the Makira Aquamarine are all very good. There is also the Forest Regalia, but I wouldn't recommend to use this on Deluke. It only grants a very small amount of EM through its passive, so if you can't use the two claymores already mentioned, it's best to avoid this weapon and give it to another character in your team. In this scenario, your best option is to use the Blood Tainted Greatsword, which despite being a 3 star, is actually a really good weapon for Burgeon Deluke. Now that you know what weapons work best with Deluke, let's now talk about his artifacts which are just as important. First off, with early game artifacts, for a Melt, Vape, and Monopyro build, you can use any two combinations of two Sojourner, two Berserker, two Braveheart, and two Gambler. And for the Melt and Vape build only, you can also use two Instructor. For Burgeon, the best set is for Instructor, which will give tons of EM to Deluke, but if you don't want to use this set, you can use two Instructor with any other two set I mentioned for the three builds. Now for late game artifacts, for the Melt and Vape build, the best set overall is 4 Crimson Witch of Flames. This set is basically tailor made for Deluke, it grants Pyro damage bonus when you use a skill, which when playing Deluke, you will be doing a lot, all while increasing the damage of Pyro reactions. I highly recommend to farm this set since it's so strong, but farming this set can be a pain, which thankfully there are other options. The first being 4 Gilded Dreams, which grants attack and EM, which of course is very important on Deluke, so this is a really good alternative. After this is 2 Crimson Witch and any 2 set giving plus 18% attack. The great part of this set is that with good enough substats, Deluke can actually deal very close damage if not the same damage akin to a 4 piece Crimson Witch of Flames. So if you have very good substats for a 2 Crimson Witch set and say 2 Gladiators, it may be best to not even farm for a 4 Crimson since you're really not missing out on anything. This is the same case for 2 Crimson and any 2 set giving plus 80 EM. Though being 2 sets, they can do really good damage like 4 Crimson Witch. For the Burgeon build, the best set is 4 Flowers of Lost Paradise. This set dealt the most damage as it grants EM while also greatly increasing the damage of Dendro Reactions. 
After this set comes 4 Gilded Dreams. This set grants EM based on how many characters of your team is of a different element to the character using this set. So to deal the most damage in your team, you don't want to use any pyro characters. With a full EM bonus, damage wise 4 Gilded Dreams comes very close to 4 Flowers of Lost Paradise. So there's not much reason to actually farm for 4 Flowers of Lost Paradise, burgeon wise, if you already have a good Gilded Dream set. Then comes any two sets of plus 80 EM and 4 Crimson Witch. Chances are you probably already have these sets and the good news is that though not as much as the last two, these sets still deal really good burgeon damage. So if you want to play burgeon Diluc but not invest a lot of resources, these two sets are really good. Finally comes 4 Deepwood Memories. Normally you'd want to use this set on a Dendro character, but since Burgeon Damage is Dendro Damage, Dilu can use this set. Though I wouldn't recommend this, it'd be better for your Dendro character to use this set and Dilu use any of the sets previously mentioned. Doing this will allow for the effects of 4 Deepwood to be in play, while Dilu uses other sets that will further increase his Burgeon Damage. Last but not least, for Mono Pyro, 4 Lava Walkers is the best set as it will net the most damage thanks to its really good passive. Yep, funnily enough, 2 Crimson Witch and 2 Gladiators can actually deal more damage than 4 Lava Walkers. The reason behind this is that subsets play a huge role in these sets, and you probably already have a really good set of 2 Crimson and 2 Gladiator or any other plus 18% attack. As was the case for me, I have a really good Crimson Witch and 2 Gladiator set, but a decent 4 Lava Walker set. So when it came to damage, 2 2 Crimson and 2 Glad dealt more damage on hit and made Dilu crit more. Despite the huge 35% increased damage, 4 Lava Walkers was worse. All in all, 4 Lava Walkers is the best, but if your 2 Crimson and 2 Glad have really good substats, the damage of Lava Walkers to the 2 sets are very close, if not worse. If this is your case, there's no reason to farm for Lava Walkers, like me. I farmed for 2 months for the Lava Walker set, thinking it will be a huge upgrade for my 2 Crimson and 2 Glad, and lo and behold, it's not. I grinded 2 months for absolutely nothing. Am I angry? No. Did I cry? A little. So don't make the same mistake as I did unless you're dead set on getting an amazing Lava Walker set. Anyhow, you can also use 4 Gilded Dreams which will give you a lot of attack percentage since most, if not all of your team will be Pyro. This set deals good damage but not as much as 2 Crimson and 2 Glad which is the more convenient set. So unless you already have 4 Gilded Dreams farmed, I wouldn't recommend to use this set. As for which main stats to have on your artifacts, first I'll explain the main stats for Burgeon and Monopyro since they're the simplest. For Burgeon, Deluxe artifacts should be triple EM to deal the most Burgeon damage. As for Monopyro, you'll want to give Deluxe attack percentage, Pyro damage, and then either crit rate or crit damage. For the Melt and Vape build, it's essentially the same as the Mono Pyro build where you'll be giving Diluc a Pyro damage goblet and then either crits. The difference of the two builds is that you have the option of using an attack percentage or an elemental mastery sands on Diluc. The rule of thumb here is if your Diluc already has high attack or has supports that will buff his attack like Bennett who you should be using with Diluc anyways, it's best to run an EM sands of which I recommend. Since Diluc's attack will be increased already so much through these units, an EM sands will deal more damage. But if you don't have someone to buff Diluc's attack, say he's by himself without Benny or anyone with no bless or tenacity, or you instead have someone to increase his EM like C6 Diona, then it is best to use the attack sands. Yet regardless of what sands you use, even if you use an attack sands, remember once again you'll want to use Bennett with Diluc. As for which substats to aim for, continuing with the Melt Vape build, aim for both crits, EM, and attack percentage. For Monopyro, aim for both crits and attack percentage. Last but not least for Burgeon, just aim for EM. For Energy Recharge, honestly for the Melt and Vape build, Diluc doesn't need any ER. He already regains his burst back well, so you don't have to worry about his energy. But for the Monopyro build, aim for around 110 energy. Let's now talk about Deluxe Constellations. Whether you hope to or unexpectedly pull Deluxe Constellations, you can rest knowing that all of them are good. All of his constellations increase his damage, yet some more than others. These constellations are his best, the first being his C1, which will give your Deluxe an outright 15% increase in damage to enemies with HPs above 50%, which is really good. Then his C2, where Deluxe will gain attack percentage and attack speed each time he takes damage. This constellation is really good as really, without you doing anything, Deluxe overall damage will increase by a good amount through his attack increasing and his attacks being faster. By the way, these buffs still occur if Diluc is protected by a shield. Finally, he C6, where after casting his skill, Diluc's normal attack damage and attack speed will be greatly increased. Like the last two constellations, this constellation will make Diluc's attacks much stronger, particularly his normal attacks, which is really good since you will be always using them with Diluc. 
Now let's get into team comps. Like other characters, Diluc does rely on his teammates to be great, of which the characters I will be mentioning certainly help with. First with Burgeon since it is Diluc's newest reaction, of which no one has thoroughly explained in regard to Diluc, when playing Burgeon Diluc you want to have some team akin to this, having a supporting character that will shield or heal Diluc from the damage of Burgeon, then a Dendro and Hydro character to trigger Dendro cores with which of course you will be exploding with Diluc. For the support character I like to play Zhongli just because he is the most simple to play in this team and he will completely protect Diluc from the damage of the cores. For the Hydro character it's overall best to use Xing Chou since with his burst and skill he'll apply great amounts of hydro while also dealing a lot of damage, yet other hydro units can also work as well. For the dendro unit, Nahida is the best but the dendro traveler can also work really well. Now as for how to actually play Birch and Diluc, you probably think it's pretty simple to where it's basically Unga Bunga caveman logic, you know where it's like dendro, hydro, pyro, boom. And though this is true with Diluc it is more complex. For example, you can play Diluc as an on-field driver of Burgeon to where he's constantly applying Pyro, or a sort of passive Burgeon enabler akin to Toma where only after every few seconds do you apply Pyro for Burgeon. I've tested both of these playstyles for how high their DPS are, and if you're doing this, the playstyle you'll want to be following is both. See, the first playstyle deals the most damage, yet after say 10 seconds or after Diluc skills have all been used, the production of course is reduced by a lot so you're not performing Burgeon, which of course hurts your damage a lot so to fix this, what I do is I quickly switch to Nahida to apply Dendro and Hydro so cores are formed and then I quickly switch back to Diluc for Burgeon. Let's now talk about Melt. Melt is a really strong reaction but unlike Hydro characters and Vaporize, there are no Cryo characters currently that apply Cryo really fast like Xing Chou or Yilan for constant and easy melts. So to solve this and have Melt teams feel much smoother, I recommend to run two Cryo characters with Bennett. Having two Cryo characters will make it much easier to melt and is overall just a really good thing to have as having two cryo sub dps's will mean your team's overall damage is high the two cryos will battery each other really well and lastly everyone can utilize the crit rate increasing cryo resonance you can use any two cryo characters you'd like but i prefer using kaya and rosaria as these two apply a good amount of cryo passively while giving d look further benefits like more crit rate and increased physical damage Lastly, with Bennett, he will increase everyone's damage greatly, most importantly Diluc's while also healing him. Also, when you play this melt team, though you are playing two cryo characters, you still want to wait around 1.5 second each time you use a pyro attack, since the cryo application isn't so abundant to where you don't have to worry about reverse melting, so still be mindful of timing your reactions. Given this, you want to use Diluc's burst here as a final hit, and not as something you start off the rotation with. For Vaporize teams, as mentioned with characters like Xing Chou or Yilan, it's basically effortless to trigger Vaporize. Even with just one of these Hydro units, enemies will constantly be affected with Hydro, so there's no need to run double Hydro characters. As long as you normal attack before every Pyro attack, you will be consistently Vaporizing, so you can use Diluc's burst in the beginning of your rotation with no worry. If you decide to run one Hydro character with Diluc, you should use Kazwa as well as he will greatly buff both Diluc's and the Hydro sub DPS's damage. As for whether you should play Yilan or Xing Cho in this team, honestly both of them are very good and you can definitely use either of them, but they do bring different benefits. Yilan brings offensive benefits, additionally Yilan does not apply as much Hydro as Xing Cho does. For the most part this isn't a problem, yet by using Bennett's burst followed by Diluc's burst, this will cause enemies to be affected with too much pyro and mess up your reactions. This can be fixed pretty easily by not using any pyro attacks and just hydro attacks, so this isn't really a big deal, but you do have to be somewhat mindful of this when it comes to Yilan. In contrast, you don't at all have to worry about this with Xing Chou, at least if you see 6. Moreover, Xing Chou brings more supportive benefits to a team. Now that's not to say that there aren't any benefits to running 2 Hydro sub DPS's in a team, there are and that is why this is my most favorite team to play Diluc in. Some of you probably already know of this team since I've already mentioned this team in the past, but this team is just too good to not bring up. This team is great as it combines the great strength of Yolan and Xing Chou, which makes for an insane combo. By now including both Hydro units in this team, the passive damage from the 2 Hydro is extremely high. Honestly, it's broken. And this of course is not even counting the damage of Diluc, of which is really high thanks to Yolan and Bennett. And also, with both Hydro units, enemies are always affected by Hydro, so you never have to worry about messing your reactions or playing in a certain way. You can attack with Diluc as much as you'd like. 
Also, a great part of this team is that you don't have to give up on Ching Cho's support abilities for your launch damage or vice versa like the last team. With this team, you have the best of both worlds. Finally, for Mono Pyro is Benny, Kazua, and Sheng Ling. This team is amazing and is another one of my favorite Diluc teams because it's really strong, you're dealing high constant damage all the time, and it's easy to play. With the so many benefits from Kazua, Bennett, and Sheng Ling, everyone in this team deals high damage. And since there's no reactions in this team, you can just go all out when playing Diluc and perform perform as many pyro attacks as possible, which is actually something you want to do in this team, which is a nice change of pace and is also really fun. Well everyone, that is all the info I have on Diluc, I hope you all enjoyed this thorough guide on Diluc and hopefully now your Diluc is much stronger. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing, we're getting really close to hitting 1000 subscribers, of which I'm really grateful, thank you all so much for your support, it always means a lot to me. Anyways, that is all, thank you all for watching, take care, and of course, Thank you all once again.